All right, so today I'm going up the mast again, install the halyard restrainer. And what it is, is it's a fitting that gets secured to the mast. And what it does is it holds the halyard at a specific angle. So when you hoist it, you don't get halyard wrap. So I'm gonna go up there I'm going to drill out some holes and pop rivet this thing into place. I chose pop rivets because based on the shear force I'm concerned about drilling and tapping up in um, the mast for this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I got some deep berry pop rivets, stainless steel. Got to put Tef gel on them and everything but this is what I'm going to do today. Let's climb. Now, I got to put this halyard restrainer on. Now you see the deflection angle between the shiv and the furling foil swivel, the top swivel on the uh, Schaefer. So, zero angle is good. It's acceptable according to the Schaefer manual. better angle would be to pull it back to here. So the halyard restrainer comes back and goes like this. So what you got is a different deflection angle and Schaefer specifies Maximum of six inches between the foil cap, between the foil cap up here, right here, and the top swivel. So if the top swivel comes up to here, so I'm gonna set this thing at about five inches. Uh, oh, that's metric. So, six inch max. I'll go with five. We'll go with five. That'd be nice and safe for the sail cut that we just had. So what I want is for this head swivel to go no higher than five inches. Six inch maximum. Less is more, less is better. So if I go right here, then I set the halyard restrainer literally like I need to move it up a little bit so I'm gonna do this right here I think maybe about looks like about four inches down from the masthead so now I got a couple of reference holes. So that puts this right there. So that gives a good deflection angle to avoid halyard wrap. So even at this point, the knot doesn't conflict. I'm still at my six inch minimum. Six inches is right there. So I got a mark at five. So it don't need much. Based on this, I had to swing around and do some drilling. I'm going to drill the first hole. Don't drill through the halyard. So hopefully now you can see it better. I got to rivet this thing to there and then drill some more holes. Rivet in the gun. Ah, there we go. All right, river number one. Now, 
arrow marks up. Now you can see the deflection angle. The deflection angle is less than the head stay angle. So that's why you put one of these in. I set the knot at everything at five inches. Still give some room. Now I'm going to come down. Get the hell off of here. I'm done climbing. All right. I've got a couple more things to do before I can wrap up this rigging project. And one of them is change out this uh, turnbuckle. Put a bronze one on here. Um, I noticed some problems when we took the old ones apart. The toggles uh, were chewing up the threads, so I want to swap out all the bronze turnbuckles for new ones. I got reference marks on here. This turnbuckle is about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than this one, and I got the tension gauge on here. Uh, showing me I'm at 24 on the tension gauge which for 5 16 cable is about 11% of the braking strength of 5 16 cable. I'm just going to run this up hand tight. And then I got some work to do on the further still. So the next thing I need to do is raise this further drum up and change out this toggle and the uh, the change out the Schaefer lower toggle and the turnbuckle. So here's the lower toggle. This is the one I was having issues with. Um, we photographed it in the last video. And you can see there's like kind of pitting and corrosion right around here where the old uh, where the old toggle was rubbing against it. So I got a new a new Schaefer toggle. 200 bucks. So oh, I got the back stay set at 13%. Oh no wait, I'm 11. 11%. And that reads 24 on the loose gauge. Bingo. DIY rigging ramble on style.